Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me back in Oval Wendell Garage. As you can see, we are back onto the buggy engine build. Pretty much I've gone around and collected and cleaned and got majority of all the parts, like 95 to 98% of all the parts I need to put the short block and possibly the long block together. I have yet to go through the heads. I want to change the springs and double check the valve guides on the heads. But what I have done is pick the uh, engine case up from the machine shop. I also got the crank back from the machine shop. And uh, thankfully, um, I haven't told Brian this yet, we didn't have to grind the crank. Um, my uh, machinist was uh, pretty happy after polishing it. But yeah, majority of all the parts are clean, uh, spread out, and hopefully all accounted for. <laughs> but today, we're gonna go over the uh, engine case and all the machine work done on the engine case. And I'm gonna go and uh, do a couple little tricks that I know. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, oiling tricks out there that I don't know, but I'm gonna show you guys what I do know. And uh, also I'm going to go and um, kind of clean up and smooth and polish all the, uh, the machine work because uh, it's got a lot of jagged edges and stuff on it. So we're gonna take care of that and possibly uh, do uh, some porting. But first I'm gonna kind of walk you around what we did to the engine case. All right, to start off with, um, as you can see, we increased the size of the bore. We did a, a 94 bore with a, uh, with, a, with a decking. And I do like the, the surface on this decking, nice, nice and flat, gives uh, two good surfaces to marry together. And we also had a case server insert stuck in. And when we did that, on the other half of the case, we do have the uh, deep stud to back down in here. And like I mentioned before, the, this deep stud here was Volkswagen's cure to stop the engine case from cracking on the backside here. What they did is they stuck the, the pressure down, down closer to the main here instead of up on the top, which they figured that's what was causing the, the case to the crack on the back. And to be honest with you, I've run several of these cases uh, with that deep stud. And I've yet to crack the back here. I know a lot of people like to go in, a lot of people like to go in and fill this whole area in with, with a weld um, to make it a lot stronger. But when you do do that, you have to reline bore the case. So make sure you get that done before you get your line bore done. Otherwise, you're going to be redoing it again. Another little helpful hint is when you install these case savers, you want to install those before you bore the case. Because what will happen if you don't is you'll possibly get the uh, case saver to bubble out, then you'll never get your jug in there. One of the things I gotta do is check over the machine work, and I'm not a machinist, so this is kind of hard for me, but a lot of it's kind of common sense. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just kind of check the size of these holes with uh, the brand new uh, cylinders I got from uh, A Automotive. Yes, Brian did decide to go with brand new uh, with jugs here, and uh, I got them in, and uh, we're gonna check them out. So in the process of showing the case, we're gonna do a box opening. <laughs> The uh, cylinders actually did come in quite quickly from them. They must have had them in stock, you know, with the supply chain issue these days. I was kind of surprised. It's not like we're in a big hurry. We've got all winter to build this engine. But I do got to get back on Hubert here, so I don't want to take all winter to do this engine. And <laughs> I'm sure Brian doesn't want me to take all winter either. But, uh, yeah, bubble wrap. Got like that. And a box inside of a box. So what did I get for Christmas? I got a box. Might be able to get this opened up without a... Uh, Actually taking the box out of the box, since they don't have this. Just don't drop it off the engine case. I shouldn't say that, because last time I said that it happened. Mmm, smell of new parts. It is nicely packaged, um, and they look really nice. But let's check and see how they fit in the hole over here. See if Jim does his job properly. And they fit in there nicely. Slide right in. Now what we got to look for here, uh, one of the important things uh, you have to check out is to make sure that, like I said, the surface is merry down here. And I can tell kind of just by looking. But if you have any questions, you can put a little bit of grease on here. You know, stick this cylinder on and spin it around. And it should make contact all the way around. Because a lot of times, uh, if they don't bore this hole right, you can see there is a, a machined lip on here where they make the cylinder just a little thicker than they do down here. And sometimes that'll interfere 
which it's not this time. I know Jim likes to kind of make the hole, you know, I'm not saying he makes them really big oversize, but he likes just a little bit of uh, space in there because, you know, this, this material does expand when it gets hot. All right, well, let's get this put away before I drop it. All right, yeah, I'm really glad Brian decided to go with the new jugs so we won't have any uh, issues in the future with, with the rings. So I want to turn these over so we can see what happened on the inside of the case. So hang on. One thing I should point out before we get going too far, this is machined and threaded for a full flow oil system. Of course, it's been nicely line bored. And I don't think Jim's got a cam bore bar. My other guy did, but sometimes I'll run a cam bore. You know, you don't have to have it done all the time, but you know, I will check the, the cam and how well it moves in here. And if I feel it's gonna have to be line bored, I'm gonna have to find somebody. Pretty much the only line bore the center one, because that's where you always have the trouble. Last but not least, it has been cut here you can see all these machine marks everything's all nice and shiny for a stroker crank just because it's been cut for a stroker crank doesn't mean <laughs> it's going to clear the stroker crank you still have to double check that and one of the things uh, i probably mentioned time and time again is i'll have this thing probably together two or three times before i do the final assembly just to make sure everything you know fits and everything clears actually my friend jeremy if you guys remember jeremy one of the guys in my uh, racing crew, you know, the guy that's got the nice trailer and is kind enough to tow me back and forth to the track on certain days. He's the one that actually did the uh, clearance for the uh, stroker crank. Yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, it's really nice having that uh, machine work for the stroker crank done in these cases. Uh, I was really happy when Jim Green up there, they started doing it. And then uh, Jeremy, I think he kind of went and fine-tuned it a little bit more. We'll, we'll find out here when I start fitting things. Yeah, I've done my share of uh, I'm clearancing with just using this uh, die grinder and a couple of these uh, carbide bits and it's a lot of work, you know, because it's it's tedious. You got to go in, out, in, out, fit the crank, you know, check, mark, you know, take the crank back out and uh, hand grind some more. So yeah, it's definitely worth the money to have this done and then fine tune it. And hopefully uh, there's not a whole lot of fine tuning, you know, pretty much I'm hoping to set everything in there and it'll be good. But if not, I've got the handy die grinder. <laughs> and I'm sure it's probably uh, pretty good, but I'm probably still gonna have to do a little touching here and there. Like I said, I wanna go and get all these sharp edges. If you look down in here, you can see there's sharp edges here. I'm just gonna go around, around a lot of these things off. And I did notice over here, see if we can get in there with the GoPro. You can see this gap here from here. Um, this is a piece of uh, material from when they bored the cylinder from this direction. <laughs> it's a little bit left off there and it's actually on there pretty good, but the last thing you want is this big piece floating around. So I'm gonna make sure I remove that and uh, make sure that there's nothing else in there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, and I don't think you guys wanna witness all of this. So <laughs> I'm gonna turn on the air compressor and turn off the cameras, and then when I'm done, I'll get right back with you guys and kind of show you what I did do. Um, oh, yeah, one other thing I'm probably gonna do here, I'm not gonna spend too much time at it, but we'll flip the case back over, is I'm gonna do what, oh, what's that say? Don't know what happened there, and I don't know how much we lost, but <laughs> I flipped the engine case over, and what I'm going to do here is probably not spend too much time, but I'm going to do what they kind of call porting the case a little bit. And if you look down in here, we have this big flat spot here. Actually, there's a big sharp spot on it. I'm going to go and kind of round and chamfer that off, and just kind of the idea, probably on both sides here a little bit, not too much, because that is the main support for the main bearing. I just want to kind of round some things off, because... When the cylinder comes back down this way, you know, it's pushing air that way. So the idea is to get the air to kind of flow into the case a lot smoother. And the same with back here. I'll probably do that on this side, just kind of round it off. And you can kind of see there's another machine mark, uh, a sharp corner. And that is, that right there is factory. <laughs> that is actually from the factory. But on this side over here, flip this case back over. But we got the same thing right here. But on the front here, um, I'm probably just going to kind of loop these out a little bit and uh, just to help the air, like I said, the flow back down into the case and then you'll know, and rely on the rest of the breather system to kind of help with all the uh, with, with all the crankcase pressure. Time to make some noise. Oh, and if you did notice, I got two engine stands and when I built mine, you know, that's a Har Harbor Freight Special, um, but this one here is one that I had built, but it has four wheels, <laughs> and it's got four wheels for a reason. <laughs> but I did set this one up for uh, engine start um, with starter button, and 
you know, ignition switch. The throttle thing didn't really work really well. So if anybody's got a Bobcat that needs a, a throttle cable, let me know. And then a spot to hold a battery, which I don't know what kind of shape that battery's in. Uh, Brian kind of wants me to run this engine uh, before I hand it off to him, just to make sure, you know, the carbs are di dialed in idle-wise in the timing set. And to make sure it's not leaking a bunch of oil all over the place. But uh, I haven't done that in years. <laughs> yeah, the other nice thing about having the, the two engines here, engine stands, when I'm doing like a clearing scene for the crank, I can go back and forth and then um, do my do the little massaging I have to do and then place the crank in and place the crank in and, and go back and forth again. Uh, instead of doing focusing on this case, unbolting it, bolting this case half on, and um, focusing on that case half. I feel like it kind of gets the process done a little faster. Yeah, that was, that's the pros. Uh, the only con is two engine stands take up more space in your shop. But enough, enough about me. Let's start making some noise. Oh, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, one of the things you're gonna wanna have handy when you're doing this is uh, a shop vac. Even though you're not taking off a lot of material, man, it sure does make a lot of flakes. And uh, this is what I was using, this old trusty die grinder. I've had this thing forever with a carbide bit and didn't worry too much about getting down in too much crevices. Like I said, like I, said I didn't wanna spend too much time at this. I just kinda of wanted to get rid of all the, uh, I guess I call it deburring, get rid of all the kind of the rough, rough edges. And of course, <laughs> safety glasses. <laughs> I will stress when you're doing this to be very careful because you are working in tight quarters here. And the last thing you want to do is uh, disrupt any of the uh, machine work that's already done on there. And with the, that carbide bit, it'll take off a lot of material. I'll show you what I did here. So I just kind of went and just kind of rounded everything out so there wasn't any sharp edges. Kind of hit all the edges, kind of trying to deburr it some. But as you can see, I kind of hit down in here and I got rid of that hanger <laughs> and uh, definitely want to vacuum up any any material. I will be putting this in the parts washer again and uh, I'll just kind of show you uh, how I like to uh, back flush all the uh, oil galleys, uh, which which is very important because all this all these flakes get in everywhere. And last thing you want is one of those things floating around. But we'll flip this back over here. I said, I know it's not the prettiest thing, but uh, I did kind of take off a little bit of here, rounded everything out and kind of enlarge this hole a little bit. Like I said, I'm stressing, you gotta be very careful. This is the center main. You don't wanna take off any more material than you have to on there. On advisory, um, yeah, cut at your own risk. I'm not responsible for your handwork. <laughs> and I'll flip this one over and I'll show you on this one here. I know a lot of guys will just kind of drill the drill holes in here to kind of relieve anything that's gonna come down in there, but I decided to try this. Like I said, you gotta be very careful that you, with your tool that you don't hit any of your fresh machine work and you don't want to get too much into that main bearing journal. But again, I chamfered this and kind of made this hole a little bigger here and smoothed down any rough edges. I could probably go in there and do a little bit more if I wanted to spend more time at it, but there's nothing that's sharp on there. Okay, one last thing before I, I head out, I'm gonna show you a little trick I like to do with these uh, oil galley holes in the main, main bearing saddle here. Show you what you want to look for. Let's first find your locating pin. Make sure you have the bearing in the right direction and a little good helpful hint if you've never assembled a crank before or you just want to make sure you get it right. I like to find the, the pin and maybe put an arrow on here showing that the bearing's going to be facing this way towards the flywheel so I know where the uh, locating pin is when you pre-assemble everything. What we're going to look for is this groove on here. This is your oil groove. That's where the oil flows. It comes out of this hole right here and it flows around the bearing into the bearing holes and that's what oils your crank. You kind of want to make sure that that is lined up with the hole. Sometimes you'll get these bearings and uh, they may not be exactly lined up. I know some guys will like to chuck them in a lathe and maybe open up this a little bit because you can kind of see this one, is, it seems to be pretty centered, but you probably could chamfer it on the one side just to help things. I've personally never done that and uh, these are silver line bearings and I've always noticed them to be pretty, pretty close on. Now this is gonna seem a little scary because I got the old DeWalt here, but I put this uh, counter, I guess this is a, what they considered a countersink bit. And it's not really all that sharp, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this hole, this hole, this hole, the three big mains, and I wanna chamfer them a little bit, just kind of get rid of the rough um, machine marks in case there's any burrs in there and uh, kind of help the oil flow out a little bit. I'm not gonna touch the front one up here, just, just because uh, 
that's got a little teeny tiny hole and uh, you'd, if you get too much oiling in there it's going to want to get in uh in in front side of the pulley here and then it's got to drain itself back so you're just going to kind of carefully it's kind of hard to do it with the uh, studs in here doesn't take much just a little bit you guys probably can't see around my hands here one more time. I don't think I got it that good. There, that's all it takes. Doesn't take much at all. Actually takes longer to find the drill and the bit <laughs> and put it on than it does to do the job. But like I said, uh, I'm still gonna, I still gotta fit the crank and stuff on here. But I'm gonna vacuum everything really good, you know, clean up my mess and then um, get on to the next thing. And that's gonna be uh, fitting the crank in here. What I'll probably do is just throw the, just the rear main and the front main on and uh, just kind of set the crank in there and spin around, make sure it's not hitting on anything. And then if I'm happy with that on both halves here, I'll go and mount the rods on there and do it again. And then after I'm done doing that, I'll probably fit the, the uh, cam and then the oil pump. But that's all for future, future videos. So if you like what I'm doing here, I'll be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the buggy engine build. So keep cruising, keep shifting those gears, and definitely enjoy the ride. I'll catch you guys later. Before I was just another guy.